my name is Sarah Guthels, and I graduated from UCSD in undergrad in 2010 with my bachelor's. I actually started doing the BSMS program then, so I continued on in my master's and then quickly switched over to a PhD. Um, finished my master's in 2012 and then finished my PhD in 2014. Um, upon completing my PhD, I started doing a postdoc at UCSD and I did that for about six months and then I started doing my company full-time. So in 2012, I started a startup called ThoughtStem and we teach kids to code both in person, during workshops, after school programs, but we also develop software. And so in, in June of 2015, we made enough money where I could do that full time and support myself through that. And so that's when I switched over to doing ThoughtStem full time. When I first started at UCSD, I 100% wanted to be a doctor. I actually wanted to be a medical doctor my whole life, and I wanted to go to UCSD. I am a San Diego native, and so that was the one school where it was like, definitely get into UCSD, go into med school, and become a doctor. However, I sat in a class of, you know, 400 people in chemistry and looked over to my left and said, oh, hey, you know, do you want to get together and study together and try to figure this stuff out? And it was extremely competitive. Um, I didn't like that competitive nature. I wanted to be more collaborative. I wanted to go into medical school or medicine to do research. Um, I have asthma, so I really wanted to kind of solve problems and, and, and do things like that. And that's not the environment that I was getting from those kinds of classes. So I decided to explore other things. I gave myself a year to explore other majors and I told myself if I couldn't find anything else, I'd go to community college where it was cheaper and I could explore further and really figure out what I wanted to do. So in that year, I considered being a math major. But again, I started talking to math graduate students and they were saying that it was more theoretical and less problem solving. And really what I wanted was problem solving. A friend of mine was taking computer science, that was his major, and he told me to try the class. So I took my first computer science class, CSC 8A, from Professor Beth Simon, and I absolutely fell in love. I had no clue what I was doing. I mean, I would sit in the lab, completely lost, raising my hand, putting my name on the board. TAs were always at my computer helping me but I loved it because there was always a process to follow. There was always a way of figuring it out. And I knew this was the problem solving that I wanted. So really it was just kind of a fluke. Um, I took a class based on of a, off of a friend's recommendation and just fell in love. When I was finishing my bachelor's, I had been doing some research with Beth who researches education and better ways of teaching, particularly computer science. Um, we were trying to figure out better ways of having students interact during lecture time rather than just sitting there listening um, and copying notes off the board. When I first started my master's, however, I wanted to go into operating systems and um, completely different from what anything that I had ever done. But the reason was because I didn't feel that operating systems or just kind of um, software in general really thought about the user. And so, you know, just this idea of um, the, the way that the file structures are, things like that, I felt like, you know, my mom or my grandma have a hard time understanding it because they weren't grown, they didn't grow up around that kind of thing. Um, I started doing that a little bit, but what I realized was that overall what I wanted was to make computers and computer science and software more accessible to the general person. And so the research that I did was all around that, whether it was figuring out how to make computer science education more accessible to the general student, whether you were a computer science major or not, or making computer science education teaching or computer science teaching more accessible to the general K-12 teacher, whether they studied computer science or not, or making it more accessible to the student who's at home who doesn't have computer science parents or coder parents um, and they want to learn on their own. So I had, those were kind of my three um, areas of research. One was improving in lecture time for all students. Another one was um, trying to develop software that would work both in a classroom with a non-computer science teacher or at home with a student who didn't have a computer science parent. Computer science education isn't 
what people expect um, from a computer scientist. It has a lot to do with cognitive science, with psychology, with education. Um, but I think that's why I loved computer science education. To me, getting a degree in just computer science isn't as interesting as applying it to something else that you love. Whether that something else be you know, video games and you become a video game designer or music and you design, you know, new synthesizers or something like that or dance and you design, you know, new ways of tracking dance movements or, you know, just anything. I think it's way more powerful for you to take computer science as one of the four R's. Um, that's one of the papers that I wrote. You know, you, reading, writing, arithmetic and computer science are all just tools that I think everyone should have and then you should be able to apply that tool that you know to something else that you love. I love teaching. I love, um, I've always loved teaching. My mom's a teacher. And so basically I took computer science which was something I knew and applied it to teaching, um, both in the sense of developed software to help teaching, but also to help people learn computer science. How did I come into it? Um, well, Beth, really. Um, so she, she, that was her main research goal, and we just really meshed well, both at an intellectual level, but also just compatibility-wise. Um, we got along well, and we thought in the same kinds of ways, and we challenged each other, and I think opening up the field to a lot more people was our goal and I think that we can really grow the field if we have more people involved. Yes, I definitely struggled in probably almost all of my CS classes. Um, how did I deal with it? I learned pretty early on that in order to learn you have to fail and that you can learn from those failures. So. Really, I just, I'm not the type of person to say no or to give up, um, which can cause problems when you're taking on too much, but also is very useful when you're presented with a challenge. Um, so when I was presented with a challenge, I just knew that the resources I had were friends, peers, and especially the tutors in the lab, and that no matter what, we could figure it out. So I would just try and plug things in and see what happened. Um, I became a huge fan of debugging, which I know is sometimes the bane of our existence as coders, but also I just learned so much from having incorrect code and figuring it out from there. I also learned pretty early on that in computer science in general, it doesn't really matter what you know and what, it, it, it more matters how you can figure something out. And so that process of overcoming challenges is more important than just doing it right the first time. Yeah, so I don't think you really know what you exactly want to do and I think the the really great thing about computer science especially in today's day and age is that it's constantly evolving. So the advice that I always give is listen to yourself. Listen to the things that you enjoy doing. Um, and and follow that. And if that changes, that's okay, and, and change with it. Um, in particular, applying computer science with education, I think the cognitive science program is very useful for that because it really goes into the psychology of things, it goes into the um, you know, users, thinking about the users, and that translates really well to thinking about students or thinking about education. Um, it's Cognitive science is also very useful for user-facing apps and user-facing websites and softwares. Um, so it's not just for education. And um, yeah, but I think when you're trying to decide between all these different, different pieces, really figuring out what it is that you want to do long term. And I don't mean that in a job title or a company name. I mean that more in the I want to travel a lot. Okay, well you want to travel a lot and I love computer science. Maybe you want to do something like what Ryan Kastner does where he goes off into places and he uses, you know, um, all of the cameras and, and things to find out where Genghis Khan's tomb is or whatever it is. Um, you know, or I want to sit in an office every day and there are people who really want to do that. Um, you know, what does that mean? You just want to sit by yourself and, and be a coder? That's great. Find a job where you can really just, you know, maybe go into deep algorithms or, or just be coding all the time and trying to make this large software. I want to communicate with people a lot. Okay, well then maybe you want to be more of a project manager or a product manager type person where you build a prototype and you show it to a customer and you kind of see what they want and then you use use that to develop something where you talk with your devs and they develop, you know, the actual product. Um, 
those things are the things that matter more, I think, rather than which degree you took and which major you went into and, you know, what school you even went to. I think understanding who you want to be and the type of life you want to live and then taking computer science as the skill that you have to be able to do any of those things is the more important thing. I think, I think probably the variety. So like I said, I didn't have, maybe I didn't say it, but I didn't have any computer science experience before I got to UCSD. My high school didn't even offer it. So I didn't really have a lot of expectation. I mean, when my friend said, oh, try this class, I didn't even, I didn't even conceptualize the fact that everything was built by code. Like I kind of knew that, but not really. I mean, this was, you know, more than 10 years ago. So I just, I just didn't really understand it. And um, I think, you know, some of the classes that surprised me were architecture and operating systems, like really understanding that everything really boils down to these ones and zeros being passed through things and, and, and that, you know, you can be developing on any layer and it be useful. Um, so, you know, kids developing in Blockly is just as useful as people developing, you know, new architectures um, um, for, for computers. And I think that was what was most interesting to me. The, the two main things that we work on here at ThoughtStem are code spells and learn to mod. So we'll start with code spells because that one has the longest history. Um, back in grad school, Stephen Foster and I, he was one of my lab mates in Bill Griswold's um, PhD lab, and we together knew we wanted to teach kids how to code, but in a real gamified environment. So that doesn't mean what we like to call, and other people, we didn't coin the term, uh, chocolate-covered broccoli, which is, you know, do these math equations and then you get to do have this fun. We really wanted it to be... Um, immersive, you know, you're learning as a as a part of your goal to playing this game. And so we developed this game called Code Spells, where you played a wizard, and code was was represented in game as spells. And so you'd have this spell book, and it would teach you all about for loops and parameters and function calls and and things like that. And you know, you'd have these goals where these gnomes were like, "Oh no, I can't get my bread. Can you go and you know make make these crates move around so I can jump up and, and collect my bread?" And um, so you'd have to write code to say, okay, well, first move the crate, you know, forward this much and then loop until you reach the bread and, you know, things like that. Um, the code was actually written in Java. I mean, the code that the students would write was actually in Java and we tested it with fourth graders. So that's nine, ten years old. And they were able to write Java and understand it. We even gave them exams afterwards and they were actually able to understand it. It was really exciting. Um, so when we started ThoughtStem, we decided to do a Kickstarter to make Code Spells a real video game. Because even though we did have it feel like a real video game, Steven and I are not expert video game developers, so the, you know, the art wasn't that great and the gnomes were just these free assets we got off of the asset store. Um, so we hired these two amazing video game developers and they've turned it into something absolutely incredible. Um, and now you can code in either Blockly or JavaScript. And the reason why we switched into that is because honestly, and I know a lot of people won't believe me, but Blockly is real coding. <laughs> I actually prefer to code in Blockly. It's much faster. It's much more visual. You can actually see all of your code better, group it in different ways. Um, and you learn the exact same things that you would in a textual based language. And the benefit of it is that you you focus on the logic part of coding rather than the semicolons and the parentheses and the spelling. So we can reach much younger ages. Um, so that was something that grew from before we even thought of ThoughtStem into a product that we now are um, developing via the Kickstarter funds, but also um, Code Spells sales because it's now on Steam. Um, the second product that we have is called Learn to Mod. So when we were teaching kids in person, all the kids came in wanting to know how to code so they could mod Minecraft. And Minecraft is just this hugely, hugely popular video game, especially amongst kids. And you can modify the game by writing bits of code and changing the way that you interact with it. And so we developed an online software that teaches kids how to write those mods, which is basically just teaching them how to code. And then we provide a service where we offer them a 24 seven server and they get to go on and test their code. And we also do client side modding. Um, and it's, 
it's so much fun. Um, it's it's basically like waking up every day and getting to play Minecraft and come up with new ways that you can interact with it. And uh, as a part of that, we've done a few things. So we have the software. Um, we teach an online Coursera course for any teacher who's interested in um, teaching with Learn to Mod. We give it for free to all educators and um, the, the Coursera course is free. And uh, we also wrote a For Dummies book. We wrote a big yellow one, um, the normal size for dummies one, but for kids. And then we also um, turned that into a, a, a mini one for juniors. So this is for even younger kids, seven, five, six. Um, and it's modding Minecraft for kids for dummies. And we basically just teach them how to make a bunch of mini games inside of Minecraft. It's a lot of fun. As I've kind of, I, I do a lot of kind of retrospective thinking about my own life and I have a lot of cousins and my sister, they're all just entering college or, you know, going through college right now. So I do a lot of thinking about this and I think the most important thing is somewhat I've already said, but really figuring out who you want to be and how you're going to get there. And I think realizing that computer science or any other major is one of the tools in your huge toolbox that you'll be able to use to get there. So if you're not getting the best grades ever in certain classes, don't freak out because maybe that's not the thing that you really want to do and that's okay. Even if it is the thing that you really want to do, maybe you don't learn well in that kind of environment and that's okay. Take out from the classes and the interactions and the teachers and your peers, what you can use in the future and not just what it is at face value. Um, so don't worry about you know what other people are doing because every single person is gonna lead a completely different life and you need to focus on what's important to you and that may change. So constantly check in with yourself, notice what's important to you, talk to people, ask them about things, never be afraid to reach out. If somebody doesn't want to talk to you, they'll ignore your email, but chances are that they'll be happy to sit down with coffee for you.